Hi everyone, it's Will here. I want to create games when I grow up. Hi, it's Emma. Let's have fun today. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us at MinPro. Today, we are going to talk about tomorrow's computer society. I wonder if AI is going to get really smart and make life easier for humans. That would be nice. First, let's talk about school education. I think that impacts you two the most. Japan's Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology announced the Giga School Initiative in December 2019. Simply put, it covers four points. The first is to give each student a personal computer and create a high-speed network environment. I'd be happy if they would give each of us a computer. The second is that the computers are mainly in the cloud. The personal computer is the browser base. I don't get it. What does it mean? Well, the software is moved from the personal computer to the cloud, and the personal computer is used only for the display and operations. Until now, the software had to be installed on each personal computer. It was a lot of work when the number of personal computers increased or when new software was released. From now, the software will be installed on a computer in the cloud. The personal computer will use it as web software through the network. So we don't have to install the software on the personal computer anymore? That's right. It only needs the basic software, so even maintenance will be easier. Plus, the software will probably be updated automatically through the network. I bet our teachers will be happy since it's easier. The third is digital textbooks. More learning materials using multimedia, such as photos and videos, should be coming soon. I wish our textbooks were manga comics. I read a history manga comic in social studies. I'm sure more materials will use manga comics videos, and computer graphics in various subjects. More programming instruction and learning software will also be used. This program is called the Informatization of Education by utilizing ICT. That sounds really difficult. I thought I heard that right now is the Information Society. You're very perceptive. Education in Japan is a little behind the times. So they are already using information technology in other countries? That's right. But it's not too late. Japan will promote the informatization of education too. The fourth point is the government and society's initiatives. Students and teachers will be helped by education that uses new technologies, such as 5G communication, which we know from smartphones, AI, virtual reality, etc. Companies will also play an important part. Why are they trying to change education like this? Is it because we are behind foreign countries? That's one reason, but it's said that almost half of our jobs may be automated in the next 10 to 20 years. So AI robots will be working instead of humans? It is also said that many people will take on jobs that don't exist yet. What are jobs that don't exist? I'm not sure. But there were no jobs such as YouTubers or programmers 30 years ago. I see. So maybe it will be jobs related to computers? They might be. In any case, school education must be changed in preparation for your future. How are they going to change school? Put simply, information literacy will be developed. That's another difficult phrase. The information literacy? That's right. We've spoken about this a little in the previous chapters. It includes the ability to use information, such as understanding, collecting, disseminating, and programming information, and the ability to sense information, such as information morality and the attitude to participate in the information society. 
The society of the future is said to be the fifth society. You may have learned this in class. The first society was a hunting society, then an agriculture society, the third was an industrial society. And now is the information society. It's the next, so it's the fifth society. Sometimes it is called Society 5.0. There are some significant changes happening that will change the version of society. Schools are being changed to foster students who can adapt to these changes. Does changing the school mean that the teachers will change too? Your teachers won't be replaced. Instead, they will also learn information literacy. The school's information equipment will also change. So that's why each student gets a personal computer. Our teachers are so busy, so I hope someone will help them. I think the government and private companies will support your teachers in the background. In a game, that would be the rear guards. Like a wizard. So our teachers are heroes. And we are sword fighters in training. I wonder what the opponent's demon king is like. That's a good metaphor. I wonder who the Demon King is? The Demon King is a problem this society has. What kind of problems does society have? In Japan, we have an aging population, low birth rate, global warming, natural disasters, coronavirus, just to name a few. Around the world, there are many problems, such as the food crisis, public health, medicine, education, conflicts, human rights resources, and energy. The Demon King is crazy strong. I wonder if we can win. Beating this Demon King is the goal, or dream, of Society 5.0. The weapon we will use to beat the Demon King is the computer. Various technology, including big data, artificial intelligence, and robots, are created from computers. We have to use these effectively to defeat the Demon King. So that's why we're learning to program. And developing the attitude of a hero. That's right. Looking at the big picture, the future requires a society that balances the world with local communities and respects people with different characteristics. We must also continue to develop without destroying the environment and without wasting resources. That really is a big picture. It's hard for me to imagine. We might only be able to play a small part in addressing the problem. However, it is important that we correctly understand who the Demon King is. For humanity to survive, we must eliminate and block the Demon King ourselves. Let's move on from the Demon King, and imagine how things will change in the future in several fields. All of these fields should be advanced by computer technology. First, let's look at medicine. With the global outbreak of coronavirus, medicines are important, but prevention is the most important. Washing our hands, wearing a mask, and staying away from close spaces, crowds, and close contact settings. That's right. And from now on, the vaccine will be our strongest armor. In Dragon Quest, it would be the powerful shield. To develop vaccines, researchers worldwide have studied viruses, made prototypes, tested them, and perfected them at an unbelievable rate. This has involved using many computer devices, including PCR testing machines to check for infection, virus analyzers, and networks to share information about the infected and the virus. The equipment used to make the vaccines is run accurately by computers. A lot of software has also been programmed to convey the correct information to us. Can the vaccines prevent COVID-19? Some vaccines are said to be effective for 90% or more of people. Beyond that, there are hopes for tailor-made treatments that use personal medical history and genetic information to create treatments and medicines that are unique to each individual. Amazing! I can have my own medicine made. 
In addition, regenerative medicine using iPS cells can restore body parts and organs lost due to accidents or diseases. I wonder if those are like the healing spells full heal and revive. Technology is also advancing to replace parts of the body with the machines, such as artificial hearts, hands, legs, ears, and eyes. In elderly care and medical care, high-function beds and wheelchairs, voice operation, AI robot monitors, and power suits for caregivers are also evolving. I hope it will make life easier for the seniors. I hope they will make work easier for the caregivers, too and the doctors and nurses. Next, how about global warming? Well, when they burn petroleum, it releases carbon dioxide, which makes the Earth warmer, right? I've heard that if the temperature rises by one degree, we're in big trouble, but I don't understand it well. It's a bit hard to imagine because the temperature goes up and down every day, and the temperature is 30 degrees different in the summer and winter. However, the 0.7 degree increase in average temperature over the past 100 years has caused the sea level to rise 20 centimeters. In Japan, the area of beaches has decreased by 10%. In other words, in the future, low areas will sink into the sea and become uninhabitable. That's not good at all. I bet that's not all that's going to happen. You're right. Various problems are occurring. More serious is the increase of abnormal weather conditions such as floods, droughts, heat waves, and typhoons. These will affect agriculture and fisheries and could result in food shortages. Japan imports 60% of our food, so a poor harvest or fish catch overseas could quickly lead to a food shortage. Oh no! It would be terrible if we didn't have food. Abnormal weather is scary too. We have to take countermeasures. The energy produced by burning oil and coal emits carbon dioxide and speeds up global warming. In Japan, thermal power generation, production plants, and automobiles account for more than 80% of all carbon dioxide emissions. We must switch our power generation to renewable energy sources, such as solar, wind, hydro, or nuclear power. Something else we need to do is to improve the performance of batteries used to store electricity. There's also a method to change electricity into hydrogen energy and store it. If all power generation and automobiles could be made petrol free, the amount of carbon dioxide emitted could be reduced by less than half. So all the cars would have to be electric vehicles? Can we really live without thermal power? If we don't, the human race could die out. Don't scare me. Programming will save the world. I sure hope so. The next problem deals with after you get married. When you grow up, fall in love, and get married, you may have a baby. I know. The problem with the declining birth rate. I can't imagine having children right now. Me too. Love and marriage? Our aging population and our declining birth rate are both serious problems. If there are fewer children, our population will decline, and the country will become weaker. In Japan, according to some research, the population will drop by 20% to 95 million by 2050. The population aged 65 and older will account for 40%. Or in other words, about half of our population will be seniors. That's not good. That's really serious. We might not be able to take care of them all. Well, we have to take countermeasures for this too. In other words, assistance and benefits for children, such as education and medical care, and assistance and security for parents. This is a broad category that includes childbirth, childcare, housing, and leave. That's why we need to digitize our government with computer technology. Applications must be simplified so people can get assistance and benefits without waiting. Information must be shared with the city governments and hospitals, and we must cooperate to support families with children. If we don't do this, families won't be able to have and raise children without worrying. We need a society that is kind to children and parents. I guess programming is going to save us. 
I think that is correct. Lastly, let's talk about the total digitization of industry. In addition to education and medical care, agriculture, logistics, civil engineering, finance, government, and other industries will be digitized by the Internet, big data, artificial intelligence, and the Internet of Things. The majority of work will be unmanned. This will be a world where people and things are connected with a network and serviced by computers. I don't get it. Is it something like a future with Dora Amon? Well, simple and dangerous jobs will be done by robots. Humans will be doing what is good for themselves, society, and the planet. In any case, the future is yours to make, isn't it? In closing, I would like to give you the words of Sante Zuperi, the author of The Little Prince. As for the future, your task is not to foresee it, but to enable it. This is the last chapter of this session. Thank you for joining us to the end. We also have an expanded version. I look forward to seeing you there. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. See you again.